Hello, how are you guys doing tonight? Let's go ahead and stand. Are you guys excited to worship Jesus? Yes. Yes, yeah, so we're just going to pray. And as I'm praying, I want you to just close your eyes. I want you to just press into the Lord tonight. To start lifting up your song, lifting up your praise, lifting up your voice to Jesus. Yeah, come on. Thank you, Jesus, tonight that we get to worship you. We were just talking in the back and just that we don't have to worship Jesus, but we get to worship Jesus. That we get to be here tonight and we get to bring our oil before him. So Jesus, we come with everything that we have. We come with all of our oil and we come ready to pour upon you, Jesus. We come ready to pour upon your feet. Jesus, may you be glorified, may you be honored tonight. May each and every one of us come holding your hand and looking at your face as we look and we gaze upon the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That we won't hold back anything tonight. That we will release a shout, a song, a worship before you tonight. Come on, just start worshiping him. Just start praising him. Just start singing your song. Come on, don't wait for us tonight. That we get to come tonight in unity before you, right here at the foot of the cross, and we get to pour it out, Jesus. Thank you for your blood that made a way for us tonight, Jesus. Come on, please don't stop. Please just keep looking at him and worshiping him. He says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus tonight. Don't worry about anything. Whatever you came in here with, look upon his face. He's so ready to embrace you. Jesus, we love you. We love you, Jesus.
open wheels Every battle you've already won We've already won There is no weapon That's enough to walk on There is no
thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can't part. He's the God of the brave. Anything. Show me one thing. Come on, sing it. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me a mountain. He's the God. Anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me the waters. He's the God. Of Come on, let's declare. Sing it again. Show me one thing. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the brave. Do it. Anything is possible. anything is possible with you Lord. nothing shall be impossible with God you believe that tonight I'll ask you again do you believe that tonight thank you Lord
death is defeated, the King is alive. Oh, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the King is alive, singing again, oh, I'm going to sing in the middle, louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar up from the ashes, hope will arise, death is defeated. King uh, up from the ashes, up from the ashes, hope will, hope will arise. Death is defeated. Up from the ashes, up from the ashes, we declare hope will arise. Yes, it will. The King is alive. God we love is alive. The God we praise is alive. Yes, he's alive. You 
purpose in your heart right now to forget about everything and continue worshiping Jesus. Come on. There's a place in the Spirit the Lord wants to take us. Come on, just lift your voice and begin to love Him. Come on, every hand lifted. If you're able to stand, if you're able, I want you to stand up. And just lift a song, the songs of the Spirit to the Lord.
Like wine for you to drink Like water from my heart I pour my love on you If praise is like perfume I'll lavish mine on you Till every drop is gone drop is gone I'll pour my love on you It reaches to the high And it flows to the lowest valley. Every voice, every voice. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. It's power Oh, it reaches To the highest mountain oh, And it flows To the lowest valley That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Oh, oh it reaches to the high. Mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power oh it reaches to the highest mountain oh and it flows to the lowest valley oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its To the highest mountain Oh, and it flows To the lowest valley Oh, the blood That gives me strength 
your hands to the Lord. Drink the presence of the Lord. Come on. He is wine. He is our drink. Jesus said we would never thirst again. Lord Jesus, take over tonight. Take over. Fill your people. Fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them. Fill your people, Lord, fill your people. Wonderful, Lord. Wonderful, Lord. Wonderful, Lord. Wonderful, Jesus. Holy, Lord. Precious, Lord. Beautiful, Jesus. You know, most people shut down when he comes. But it really just begins. Just love him now. Come on. He's so close. He's so close. How we love you. How we need you. So precious. So holy. So kind. So faithful. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be at home here. Fill this place. Fill this place. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I want you to just quickly sit down, but I don't want anything to change. I want your heart to remain fixed on the Lord. Ben, would you come now? Ben Fitz is home. And I want him, listen, if you're here tonight, listen very carefully. I've been sensing for weeks that the Lord was going to storm. Uh, this meeting and that this would be a new beginning uh, a new a new season for us as a church family a season of his presence and power whatever that looks like keep playing behind me guys and if and, and John could you guys just pray for just be praying in the spirit softly Ben is a dear friend as you know and if you're here tonight, God brought you. Maybe a friend brought you in the natural, but it was God who quickened that friend. It was God who gave them that car. It was God who put the desire in their heart to bring you. And before you were ever born tonight, the Lord knew you'd be in this room. Before you were ever born, before the foundations of the world, the Lord knew that you'd be sitting here tonight and he knew you'd be hearing this message from Ben. And it is the greatest message in the universe. It is heaven's song. I want you tonight to sit with an authentic, open heart. And listen to what Ben has to say over the next few minutes. And respond like a child. You know, the scripture says, as David wrote, he said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in tents of wickedness. Can you see why? Even if you're the doorkeeper at the very edge of the door, Jesus has to walk in. You would meet Him. You would sense His presence. There's no better place than in the presence of God. You can feel that tonight. Probably all of you are like, I was missing this. Even though it's, I, I had it in my house and we can have this every day. You probably felt like I was missing this corporate declaration of the greatness of who God is. And that's why it's better to dwell here than the tents of wickedness, than anything the world can give to you. I've tried everything, 
But Jesus said, what is a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his own soul? What shall he give in exchange for his soul? Jesus also said, He said, store up treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. You know, I've never had any of my coins rust. I've never had any coins or money I had rust. But you know, and I've, I've rarely even had thieves break in and steal. But I know what it means to try and fill your life with other things and they rust, they get old. The party gets old. They're trying to find fulfillment in other things. It begins to rust on the inside and you begin to sense the depravity and weight of sin and you begin to long for other things. You begin to long for true bread and Jesus is true bread. And I can sense Him here tonight. I had that Scripture going through my mind right in the last 10 minutes. I would rather be a doorkeeper. I'd rather be the least person in the house of God than dwell in tents of wickedness. I lived in a tent of wickedness. You're looking at it. This was my wicked tent. And when Jesus knocks on the door in Revelation, He says, will you open for me? The doorkeeper is you of your own heart and your, your wickedness is whatever you're holding on to in this body of yours, this flesh of yours that God actually gave you. It's whatever is in here that is substituting Him. And I can tell you right now, sin is empty. Sin will rust your soul. Sin is the cause of depression. It's the cause of anxiety. It's the cause of every time that you feel like your identity fractures and breaks down. That's all sin. And Jesus didn't come just to reveal sin, to talk about it. He came to destroy it. He came to completely destroy the power of it. So that, like John chapter 6 says, if you come to me, you'll never hunger, never thirst. You'll never go away from Jesus feeling like, is there something else that can fill the inside of me? Because that just didn't do it. In fact, you're going to walk away overflowing with bread coming out of your own mouth. You'll have your own bread to give away. But people resist God because they think there's some better answer out there. Let me tell you something. The fact that you came into this church tonight is a sign from God that He gave you two ears to hear a message that the whole world rejects at times, but He, he caused you and chose you to hear it. You could be hearing just the same old rusting, silly, stupid show that you watched every Sunday night, but instead you're hearing the fact that God loves you. And the Scripture's clear. It says, God so loved you that He gave His only Son on the cross, Jesus Christ, for your life, for your dying to pray of life, that in Him you would have freedom. He doesn't look at you and say, you're a, you're a mess. He sees your mess and says, I'm gonna turn this into something beautiful because I love you, I created you. You just gotta stop feeding on everything that rusts. And some people say they're Christian, but they don't actually live for Christ. He isn't their fulfillment, other things are and they rust on the inside. They lose joy and week to week, they have to answer an altar call. I know how that is. I've been born again 500 times. I've answered so many altar calls, I lost count. But I didn't realize I didn't have to answer an altar call every week. I could give my whole life now. You were brought here tonight because you, because God wants your whole heart. And everything aside from Him is just a substitute that will kill you. And you know what? The end of sin is death. The wages of sin, it might feel pleasurable in the minute, but eventually, once you've finished your work with sin, it'll hand you a check saying death, separation from God, and never a second chance. There is no chance after death. But Jesus came and died your death for you. He took on a bloody cross. Can you imagine the King of the universe who made the whole world, took on a bloody cross and let the pornography and all the junk and the anger, the bitterness, the unforgiveness to your parents, the times where you ran away from home and just hated people, the times where you stole from work. Someone here who is gonna be saved tonight works in a supermarket. In fact, you work in a supermarket, the Safeway supermarket. And, and you've worked in supermarkets for, for many years and, and you came here tonight and you know that even though you believe that God is real, your life is in compromise and God is telling me to tell you that he, the safe way is Jesus. The safe way is giving everything to Jesus. You work in a supermarket, you know exactly who I'm talking to, you hear it. And you work in supermarkets, that's what you've done. You work in grocery stores. And the Lord came here, He brought me here tonight because He wants to save your life. But I can tell you right now, there's no bread there's nothing on this earth that will fill you like Jesus. The Bible is clear. It says, confess your sins, confess them to God. But it doesn't just mean say, I'm sorry, this is a sin I did. The confession of sin is actually the exchange of trusting in sin to trusting the Lord. And when you trust in the Lord and you give your life to Him, what does He do? He became poor in all things 
so that through Him you might become rich in Him. All His riches, all that He is, He is the, the truth. He is the way, the truth, the life. He is the riches of God. When you give your life to Jesus, all of those rusty things you used to try and get to fulfill yourself, they feel like nothing. They feel so empty. I don't ever have to get born again, again, again. I never have to have that again. Because I got saved, I gave my whole heart. Some of you haven't given your whole heart. You give your heart on Sunday, you give your heart on Wednesday, and then pornography fills your heart the rest of the week. Would you like to have bread that never runs dry? Would you like to experience the blood that He, that he shed on the cross? Do you know Isaiah 53? It says that He was wounded for our transgressions. And it says that, and this is a very, it's almost scary, this Scripture. But it says He was bruised for our inequities and it says the chastisement for our peace was upon Him. You know, I remember when I met the Lord and it was like someone lifted thousands of pounds of weight off my heart. When He went to that cross, the perfect Lamb of God, all the, it wasn't just the sin that touched Him, it was the weight of what sin produced. It was all the feelings of anxiety and depression and, and darkness that sin produces in us. That feeling like you're always carrying around this, this dark thing in your soul that never feels fulfilled. Jesus took that on the cross. And that's why it says He was crushed for our inequities. So no one crushed Him on the ground with their feet. The weight of what sin has done to you, it came upon His soul and crushed Him on the inside. It was so heavy that none of us could take it. But that shows that He's so good that He didn't want you to take it. He took it for you, that's how much He loves you. Why would you wanna to go to any other brand? Why would you wanna to go to what rusts you, what will kill you, what eventually will completely destroy you? Why would you not want Jesus? It's pride to not choose Jesus. It's just pride saying, I know how to live my life. No, you don't. If you know how to live your life, why aren't you joyful? If you know how to live your life, why aren't you happy? You're not happy because you haven't had Him. Tonight, He stretches His hand to you. This may be the last opportunity you get to hear the message. When you turn on CNNBC, they're not telling you that the Messiah loves you. They're telling you to eat the rust, eat the dirt. They're telling you to sin along with them. God has called you here tonight. He's put you on the live stream so you'd have ears to hear that He thinks you're so valuable, you're worth dying for. But you must let go of all these sins. You must be real with God. Take the mask. God sees through it anyway. Take the addiction. God sees what you're doing. And let His cross, His perfect grace that covers every sin, let it fill your heart, man. Let Him love the hell out of your life but you gotta be real with the Lord. Okay, I want you all to close your eyes. You must be real with Jesus. I met Jesus at 4.15 in the morning in my lounge room by myself with a cigarette in my hand. God doesn't care where you're at. He cares about getting into your heart. You've gotta be real with Him. All of you, please close your eyes in this room. If you know your life is in compromise, it's in sin against God. Even if you believe that God is real, that won't get you to heaven. Believe, the Greek word means to put your full trust in. Satan believes in God and his end is destruction. If you know that your life is still being fed by rusty old other things, you have substitutes for Jesus. You have not made him the Lord of your life. And you wanna give him everything tonight. You wanna be born of God. You wanna be free and forgiven of sin. I wanna ask you right now to be brave, and to be real before the Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that as many as you've called to give their life to you tonight, that they would stop running from you. They would stop running. They would start to think about the cost of running and they'd start to see the beautiful mercy that reaches to the highest mountain and the lowest valley. Holy Spirit, please convict people right now. Cut them to the heart. Remove the veil that they might be made whole, that they might give their life to you tonight. If that is you and you know you're running, no one can see you except Jesus. Stand up. Everyone else's eyes are closed. Stand up if that is you. That's awesome. I see you guys, man. That's amazing. I see you, sweetheart, up the back. Jesus loves you. Is there anybody else? You know you're not right with God. Stand up. Just stand up. We can't pray for you because of all this stuff, right? We can't lay hands on you, but you can stand for Jesus like He stood on that cross for you. 
There's more, I believe there's more. Yes, sweetheart, God loves you. He loves all three of you, you stood together. That's beautiful. I believe you're all friends. God brought you here tonight. All three of your lives are gonna be completely transformed. He promised to make all things new. Is there anybody else? Yes, I see you over there in the overflow, out the, outside, is there anybody in the overflow? Just stand up to your feet. Don't be ashamed, don't be embarrassed. People aren't gonna tap you on the shoulder and say, what sin did you do? They're gonna come up to you later and go, you're forgiven, so am I. You're set free, so am I. We're all part of His mercy. If you know God is speaking to you right now and you're resisting Him because you're worried, you're like, it's a room, there's people here, there's cameras, who gives a rip? Make the choice because you know what is truth. Stand to your feet if that is you, that you've been living in compromise. Bless you, friend. He loves you. Come on, give these guys a hand. Give these guys a hand. I see you, sweetheart. There's more. There's more. It's amazing. There's more. I believe there's five more people and I will call you out because I understand what a future with God and without God, I understand the difference. I'll call you out. There's five more people who are seated and you know, you're like, I wanna get up, but I feel afraid. Don't be afraid. Nobody's looking at you. Stand up to your feet. If you know, there you are. Bless you, friend. Jesus loves you. There's four more. I know, Jesus cares about you. Just say, hey bro, bless you, man. God loves you so much. He loves you, He adores you. Maybe the other ones are standing out in the, in the uh, no, the Holy Spirit just checked me then. He said, no, they're in here. There's three more people and you know your heart's thumping. Just stand to your feet, give your life to God. God cares about you so deeply. He loves you so, so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Was there another one who stood then? I didn't see. Thank you, God. I'm just gonna, oh, thank you, bro. Bro, bro, God loves you. Your yes for Jesus is gonna mean everything. He loves you, man. I'm just gonna ask one more time. I feel there's a couple more and you're just resting in your heart. You're like, but I believe in God, but, but you also have these secret things that you live for, these secret things that you, you hold on to. You know, Jesus, if it was only for a few, a handful of people, He still would have died. The population of the earth was much less than it is now. But He took the sins of the whole world, past, present and future. He wants you. Can you believe that the King of the universe is calling your name? Oh, what an honor. Don't miss this, man. Don't miss God Himself speaking to you. I'm gonna ask one more time if there's anybody else. Where is that? What happened? In by the door. Bless you, sweetheart. Jesus loves you. Is there anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Okay, we're gonna pray. There's no magic words. There's no special words. We hate magic. <laughs> there's no, <laughs> there's, only, there's only one thing you can do. Right now, as you're standing in the mercy of God and as you're standing like there in the overflow, maybe you're at home, stand to your feet. You can only ask God in, in an honest way, but you've got to pray a confession of where you are and then the confession of who He is. Let's pray this all together, church. Lord Jesus, I confess I've sinned against You. I confess I need You. I believe that You died for my sins and that You rose from the dead and that You alone are the Messiah. Today, Jesus, I officially welcome You into my heart to be my Lord and to be my best friend. I give You my whole heart, Jesus. Now just begin to talk to Him, just begin to tell Him, to say, Jesus, just begin to speak to Him now. Just keep talking to Him, just tell Him, I'm Yours, I'm Yours, everything is Yours. Just keep talking to Him and those around them, maybe just stretch out your hands, you can't touch them, but just put your hands toward them and just pray right now, the Lord would completely set them apart. He'd completely free them of every evil thing, everything that was a bondage in their life. We pray against it in Jesus' Name. We break it off right now in Jesus' Name. Just put your hand toward them. Just begin to pray, church. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice, guys. Just pray over them. Bless them. Get them good, God. Change everything. Break the power of the enemy that all things might become new. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Father, we ask you that every one of these precious people who stood, as Jesus is entering their heart now, would you fill them with the Holy Spirit? Would you fill them with the Holy Spirit? Flood them with the presence of God. We pray that all the weights, all the burdens, any addiction, addictive pattern of sin, anything they've ever done, all these things that were in their world, depression, anxiety, any sickness that came through sin, God, we're asking for a total restoration. We pray the blood would get like a magnet, everything it paid for, like a magnet that would be drawn to them, to the deepest valley in their heart, to the highest place in their mindset. God, we ask You that You would completely saturate them with the reality of the blood of the Lamb. Thank You, Lord Jesus. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, God. Guys, guys, as you're receiving prayer, I want you to look at me real quick. I want to tell you something. If you just invited Jesus into your heart, it doesn't matter if you sinned on the way coming in here. It doesn't matter if you were looking at stupid things on your phone on the way into this church. As you stand here right now, all of heaven is like this. They're like, yes, they're celebrating because your whole life is completely new. All your sins are forgiven. Every single sin is forgiven. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, give Him all the glory. Give Jesus all the glory. Praise you, great King. Praise you. Praise you. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lamb of God. Come on, shout His name. Jesus. Savior of the world. He alone receives all the honor, glory, and praise. Praise you, great King. Praise you. Hallelujah. Guys, stay standing with these people. This is amazing. Can you believe it? Inside your conscience, all sin is gone. I know how you feel. I remember how you feel right now. But this is just the beginning. I want Pastor Michael's gonna tell you some details because we really wanna help you, wanna follow you up and, and just give you some uh, instruction of how you can go forward right now. But I mean, <laughs> this is it, you're brand new. The Scripture says you're brand new. Isn't God amazing? Let them know you love them. Come on, give the Lord praise. Everybody can just grab a quick seat. If we could put that information up on the screen, please. And you know what? While I'm talking, for those of you uh, who are hungry, just keep ministering to the Lord because He's just not, he's, he's still moving. Text more Jesus to that number. If you stood tonight or you wish you did, I want you to find somebody tonight and say, I. I wanted to stand, and I did not. I want to give my life to Jesus right now. I also want you to text that number, and more Jesus to that number, I should say, and we're going to help equip you. And John and Jenna, would you guys stand? Are they going to meet you at the booth? Okay, so this is John and Jenna. Just turn around, guys, so they can see you. Yeah, give them a hand. I want you to meet John and Jenna at the Jesus School booth after service tonight. And we're so excited to walk with you. It's such a joy. I want us to give the Lord praise one more time. And uh, can we let the worship team know how grateful we are? Joel, help me. Just fill the room up real quick. Everybody just grab a seat. Uh, Courtney, the Lord is taking you into a completely new season. I feel like tonight is the beginning of it. He is taking you into a season of the depths of the Lord 
into his heart, a greater authority is coming on you. Hey, uh, everybody has done amazing tonight, but God has something special for you, Courtney. Just lift your hands to heaven, would you, Courtney? I want everybody to stretch your hands towards her. Father, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the revelation of Jesus that only comes supernaturally, let it come upon her tonight. Let this one thing come upon her tonight. Let her life be about one thing from this moment forward. Burn her up tonight in the love of God. I pray that over the next few days that wave after wave of the love of Jesus would flood you, overtake you, lovingly distract you, keep you up at night, and wake you up early in the morning. Give her songs that are burst of the Spirit and take all the pressure away. The future is yours, Courtney. The future is the Lord's. It is not yours, it's the Lord's. And the will of God is to cling to the Lord himself. That's what Jesus said. The will of the Father is to cling to the Son. Now, precious Lord, come on, stretch your hands and pray in the Spirit now. Precious Lord, change everything now. Let a new wind blow. And blow, O north wind, and blow, O south wind. Change the season. Let the refreshing of the Holy Spirit come now. Now, let it come. And fill her with delight. Fill her with love. Numb her to the world and to its ways. And to the rat race. Just numb her to it all. To expectation and that we all put on ourselves. Let it die tonight. Catch her up in the wonder of God. The wonder. Listen carefully now, Courtney. Into the wonder of the beauty of the face of Jesus. He is altogether lovely. He is beautiful. And everything about him is perfect. And he does all things well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on at church, say amen. amen. Love you. Love you. Isn't the Lord good? Come on, let's just follow the Holy Spirit. Come on, just close your eyes and give Him your attention. Just keep blessing the Lord. Forgot my Bible. Not to church. Forgot to bring it up here. Okay. I'm going to ask the team. I don't want to break the flow of the Spirit tonight. I'm going to ask the team for the online uh, service only. For the online community. Please put up the text to give info. If you're watching my text to give tonight, if you're watching the stream, not if you're here, if you're watching the stream, I'm going to ask you, uh, just you could, now would be a great time for you to give. For those of you who are in the building, I don't want to break things up right now, so we, we will receive the offering later. But for those of you who are watching, the text to give info is on your screen, and you can give at any time, and we would so appreciate that. Over the last few months, 
as you can imagine, uh, with us not gathering, the ministry has uh, obviously felt that financially. So I want to ask you to be generous tonight if the Lord has blessed you with this ministry. Oh, come on. Just lift your hands to heaven. In just a moment, I, I want everyone to find a seat. Find it now. In just a moment, I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit, not, not to ask him to come. He's here, but to welcome him. And there's a difference. We've all been places where we don't feel welcome. But he's welcome here. I said he's welcome here. So I'm going to welcome him. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. To breathe new life into you. To fill you with his beauty, his fire, his love, his passion. His passion for Jesus and people. We need him. So for just a second here, lift your hands to heaven. And when I do here, invite the Holy Spirit just to receive him. Some of you might feel him physically come upon you. You may feel heat. You might feel strength. You might feel joy. You might cry. You might, you might feel a deep peace. Pain may leave your body and he may heal you. He wants to. Whatever he does and whatever he begins to do, it's tangible. That is the one common denominator throughout the scriptures. In the New Testament, when they encountered the Holy Spirit, in some way, shape, or form, it was knowledgeable, tangible. Whatever he begins to do in you, you might speak with new tongues for the first time. You might feel the burden of the Lord for the world. You might... Inner, feel the desire of Jesus for the nation, whatever that might look like. The only thing I'm going to ask you to do tonight is to not resist. We're all hungry here. We all need Jesus. There'll be nobody rating you, scoring you, looking at you. Are you ready to receive a fresh outpouring of the Spirit? Are you ready? Wonderful Jesus. You're the great baptizer. He's already starting. I feel his fire already. You're the great baptizer. Holy Spirit, come and touch your people. I welcome you. Fire of heaven, begin to fall. We need strength for the day. We need you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come in your power. Come in your power. Fill your people. Raise up evangelists tonight. Yep. Raise up missionaries tonight. Heal marriages tonight. Burn hearts alive tonight. Burn them up tonight. Raise up pastors tonight. Release the gift of prophecy tonight. Raise up teachers and apostles. Raise up fire-branded house moms tonight. Fire-branded businessmen tonight. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, come, come. Come, wonderful Lord. Come, wonderful Lord, in your fire, in your wind, in your power, in your glory. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Just yield, that's right, just yield. Yield to what he's doing. Yield. However he is touching you tonight, yield. Yield. You don't need to generate anything. You don't need to do anything on your own, but receive. But 
receive. Receive. Receive the gifts of the Spirit tonight. Receive. Receive the gifts of the speaking, new tongues and words of wisdom, words of knowledge and prophecy. Receive gifts of healing, the working of miracles. Receive. Receive the presence of the Holy Spirit. He comes to the hungry. I want everyone to find a seat now, please. No more moving for the next 10 minutes. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Is there someone here who's had a cartilage issue in the knee? A cartilage issue in the knee. There's one there. Anyone else? Wave. There's one there. One there. One there. Put your own hand on your knee. Father, let the healing power of the Holy Spirit move through that knee now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, be completely whole. You are the creator of the universe, Father. Heal and create that cartilage in Jesus' name. Receive that. Just begin moving that knee. Begin moving that knee. Don't look for your pain. Look for the healing. Look for the healer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. Yes, Lord. Someone here considered giving up on marriage. Raise your hand quickly. This is not to condemn you. The Lord is going to work a miracle. I see one hand there. Is there a couple here together who is considered giving up on marriage? If you oh, there's one right there. Stand up. This isn't to shame. This is to love. Father, stretch your hand. Come on, stretch your hand. Father, in Jesus' name, work a miracle. Work a miracle. Do what you did in my parents. The night my dad came to Jesse's father's meeting to divorce my mom. And instead, you rocked my dad, and now he's a pastor. Father, touch this couple. Come on, stretch your hand. Touch them. In the name of Jesus. Father, work a miracle. Let both of them have a heart of forgiveness. There was another hand that went up back there. Can, in, are, you with the, are you with your husband? No. Stretch your hands towards this woman. Father, work a miracle. Work a miracle. Heal. Heal in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Is there a young lady here who's felt such consistent headaches that they have literally, uh, at times, paralyzed your day? Raise your hand. So consistent that it's, you've, there's one there. Are you on medication for that? No. Is there someone else who's on medication for it? Anyone? You have that too. Anyone else? I mean, it's so brutal and so consistent. Father, and come on, stretch. Uh, I'll stretch my hand. You guys just receive. Father, in Jesus' name, heal. Heal in Jesus' name. Let them never return. Let them never return in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mantiel fentier bekenti orboko. Nistentier fekenti armaka. The Lord's moving again. Mare le bendi orma non dier fekentier meke. Nantiel mar ma contor mo contiel feke. Kistendier meke manti armaka. Just softly pray in the spirit all over the room. Mantia le fendior. Kintiar me kentier beke. Nara la mantier. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Mara basentier fecondo. Holy is the Lord. And worthy of praise. Greatly to be praised. 
worthy is his name, worthy is his name, worthy is his name. Is there a lady here or a parent here whose child has been suffering with night terrors and it's, it's been an issue? Is there anyone here whose child has been suffering with that? Anyone? Where? Oh, right here. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Father, is the child here? No, fa shut your hand, let's agree. Father, in Jesus' name, we agree for peace in that child and peace for the mom in Jesus' name. Let tonight be the beginning of supernatural sleep. You give your saints, your children, rest and sleep. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke fear from your home. And I also rebuke unneeded arguments and the desire to be right. The desire to be right. I pray that God would lift it just straight out of that environment. The meekest is most right. The lowliest is most right. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. The Lord cares about all of these things. Keep praying. Keep praying. As you keep praying, the Lord keeps moving. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. I'm so at peace right now. <laughs> I don't have a care in the world. I do, but I don't. Do you know what I mean? Peace that all understand. Supernatural peace doesn't make any sense at all. And it never will. I want to tell you something about the anointing and the way the Holy Spirit works. We need to learn this because th this is our home. His presence is our home. Yeah, keep playing there, Joel. His presence is our home. His manifest presence is our world. It is our home. He is our home. And we need to learn to walk with Jesus through these moments. Privately, yes, but also together as a people, as a family. Psalm 42, 7 says this. Deep, listen carefully. Deep calleth unto deep. At the noise of your waterfalls. Now listen carefully. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The presence of the Spirit. The way the Lord keep playing. Oh, this is beautiful. I am I'm feeling great tonight. I feel wonderful. You know, there's so much to pick up now. So many distractions so many reasons, so many opportunities to be a hero, to pick, to, 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 to start a fight, to wage your own war. There's really one hero. God doesn't need any more keyboard cowboys. That's Ben's phrase. He doesn't. He doesn't need your argument, your post. He needs you. He wants you, I should say. I hate to shock the church. He really doesn't even need us. He's doing all right. Deep calleth unto deep. At the noise of your waterfalls, all your waves and billows go over me. Spirit comes corporately with wave after wave. He comes. He, he moves. Sometimes he takes a step back to see if we will go on without him. He wants to see if you want to be the hero. And whether or not we want to put a tool to an altar that needs no tool. You know, it's not the devil who messes up meetings like this. It's us. If Jesus walked into your room, 
none of you would push him to the side and ask if he brought anybody with him because he's just fine all by himself. It begins with a partnership in the spirit, but it doesn't end there. The stronger he comes, the less you should see of me and us. Do you understand? This is home. So enjoy him. It's legal. Enjoy him. Ask him to touch you tonight. Ask the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm hungry. I need you. And it may not happen if you're staring at me. Look to Jesus right now. Close your eyes. Just say, Lord, I'm, I need more. I'm hungry. Grab me in the depths of my being. Don't leave me the same. You might be a preacher here tonight. Don't let that numb you. You may be anointed. Don't let that replace your first love. Ask the Lord to grip your soul tonight. Come, Holy Spirit. 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 Some of you actually need to ask Him to touch you out loud. I feel that. You actually need to say, Jesus, touch me. Yep, that's right. You actually need to speak it. Jesus, touch me. Use my on fire tonight. Grab me. That's what I used to pray. Grip my being. Touch my life. Have me. Have the entirety of my life. Have more of me. I long to see more of you. Don't let me do it for you. Ask him. Talk to him. You, you talk to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Precious Lord. Precious Lord. Do you know an invitation in the scriptures to drink from the river of delight? We need the joy of the Lord. We need the presence of the Spirit. And it's not fleshly. When it's real, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. If you're watching online tonight, around the world, Jesus wants to touch you. He wants to be your, your bride. It's not to love Jesus first and your family second. No, no, no. It's to find Jesus in all. It's Him being all in all. Jesus wants to be your everything. I sense deep within my soul that I'm speaking into families tonight that are watching, that are in chaos, that are being attacked by the devil. The peace of God is not in your home, in your marriage, in your family. Let Jesus touch you tonight. The best husbands love Jesus most. The best wives love Jesus most. The best parents love Jesus most. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Is the Lord, is the Lord, is the Lord. He's holy and wonderful and pure and perfect. Rightly do we love you. There's nothing more right than to love you. Nothing could be better, more perfect than to love you. Nothing makes more sense than to love you, Jesus. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Wonderful, Lord. Just let his peace wash over you so much fear out there let his peace replace it let his love destroy the fear we praise 
saw all these young girls here stand up to give their hearts to Jesus. Are, are you guys a family? Are you all related? You just came together? Amazing. How do you know each other? Could you say it louder? What'd they say? Youth group. I love that. I love that. Isn't that beautiful? Wonderful Lord. He's wonderful. He's so wonderful. If you're uncomfortable right now, it just means you need to spend a little more time with him. Do you want to go home and watch the news? What would that do for you? Would you like to scroll a little more until your thumb comes down with arthritis? Has Instagram been filling you with faith? Where else would you want to go? Better is one day. One day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Just one day. You harassed us for months to meet, and now we're here. Do you need to go somewhere? <laughs> what you guys did the whole time. Uninformed. Wah, 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 wah. Now we're here. Have a drink. You know I was in Reading once and uh, we had moved out there. Our kids were in school. We took a break as you guys know and I was there in bed watching Sunday night football, <laughs> which is not on tonight, by the way. I had my children in my arms. Uh, well, actually, Sophia was little. She was in bed getting up for school, but the boys, a little older, they stayed up to watch football. I had basketball shorts on and a tank top. My kids were in my arms. And I was watching Sunday night football, and then I had the laptop on in the bed watching Sunday night church, and Bill was on. Let me, let me just set the stage. I'm in Reading, watching church on a laptop, and watching football. The meeting was good. It was, I mean, it was, it was great. But then Bill took the platform and started singing a cappella. I will give you all my worship. Do you remember those, those moments? So I'm, I have my boys in the bed and I feel the presence of God. And the Lord talks to me. He asked me this question. Did you come here to watch, did you move from Florida to Reading, which is like moving from Florida to Europe? It's so hard to get there. It actually is a quicker trip from Florida to London it's direct than trying to get to Reading from here by like three hours. The Lord's like, did you move here to watch on the laptop? Are you, are you that satisfied? He said, what are you doing? I said, Lord, I'm loving life. I've got football on and Bethel and my boys. The Lord said, that's not why I sent you. How hungry are you? I told him, but I'm in my shorts and a tank top. It's amazing the excuses we come up with as we believe we're informing God. <laughs> He's got to scratch his head sometimes. I know what you're wearing, son. Keep playing there, Joel. This is wonderful. So I, uh, I said, Lord, I won't be able to get in because I didn't have any contacts really back then. I'd never really pushed my weight around. I would line up with everyone else. So if you're one of them, that'll get crucified here too, by the way. <laughs> and uh, the Lord said, get dressed, drive over there. So I sped over there about 15 minutes. And by then the worship was over and Bill was preaching and the place was jam packed. 
And I, I literally had to walk up to people's aisles and say, can I sit with you? Talk about vulnerable. I had a hat on pulled down really low. Can I sit here? Nope, no room. <laughs> can I sit here? Finally, somebody had a seat next to them in the back. And I took the, my seat, kept my hat pulled down, and just wanted to be in the presence. And Bill took the pulpit. I'll never forget what he said. Tonight, I'm going to share old testimonies that are going to offend the religious. I thought, oh, what a night this will be. And he began to talk about how it was birthed, devils manifesting at, at in and out Burgers. When he walked in back in the early 90s, he'd walk in and people who didn't know him would manifest. I've seen that happen. I saw that happen in Hong Kong. I'm not ashamed of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to not be ashamed of the power of the Holy Spirit. Who are we cowering to? People who will never, ever like what we do? I walked in. Jess was there in Hong Kong. She was looking at clothes. It felt demonic off the bat. No. <laughs> I looked at the salesman. He was from here to, the, to Chris Tinsley back there. I mean, there's a big old store. I was sitting on a couch. The Lord said he has a demon. So uh, I said, well, I don't want to scream across the store while Jesse's trying to unclose as he's helping her. I said, well, maybe I don't have to scream. So I didn't. I just whispered it under my breath. Even though the guy couldn't hear me, the demon could. You think this was birth... Uh, reading books I'm saying this so that you know if you're wondering where we're going we're not just going that direction we're turning it up a hundred notches that's where we're going we're going to Jesus so I said to you demon I rebuke you and the dude started manifesting sweating across the store he can't hear me he doesn't know why he's doing what he's doing. And he beelines straight toward me. <laughs> and I'm sitting in a chair. You know the chair all the guys sit on in those department stores? <laughs> I'm just sitting there. And he's hauling at me. Like, and he had this designer belt with a cross. And Jesse was there. And we told him about Jesus right there. Right there. As the devil was getting obliterated in him. We said, do you know what that cross means? No, he just liked the shape of the cross. Man, we, we, we have seen some things. And that's just one of millions. Thousands, I should say. So Bill said, I'm going to share these stories with you. Just so you never forget how we got here. So you never forget the price paid to get here. Some of you, the young generation, you're enjoying the atmosphere, but you weren't exposed to the price and you need to know about it. There were meetings where uh, every meeting looked worse than social distancing. I was excited if a hundred people came. Nobody got healed. Nobody got saved. Nobody got free. I think maybe a healing a year. Maybe two to three, five salvations a year. We need to remember the wonders of God, what he's done in our lives, the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit. I said the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit. So I sat back there and Bill preached and all of the sudden signs and wonders started breaking out. And Bill said, I, I, I just want to keep sharing these offensive stories. Then he said, I'm going to, we're going to do a prayer line tonight. And uh, I said, oh man, I'm going through that prayer line. I didn't come to Reading to merely say, I go to Bethel. And you haven't come to Orlando to say I'm part of Jesus' image. 
That's not, that is not what God wants to do in you. You came here to meet Jesus and God raised up Jesus' image so you would encounter Jesus. So here I line up for that line and I was in the back so I was like one of, I don't know how they did it but that night the back went last. <laughs> Which was good for us at times. So I walk through and Bill's just praying for people and I have my hat pulled down. I didn't want Bill to see me because I don't know. I just didn't want him to. So it was weird. So he, he stops. His eyes are closed. He opens them. He sees me. He goes, what are you doing here? I go, what do you mean? Now I'm backing up the whole line. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm hungry for Jesus. Pray for me. That's what I'm doing here. He said, oh. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's what hunger sounds like. Hunger gets on planes. Hunger presses in. Hunger comes to the fountain and doesn't clap when he arrives. He drinks from the fountain when it starts flowing. He's not in it for the post or the picture or the status or the meet and greet. He is there to meet with Jesus. Now listen carefully to me. Listen carefully. I want you, everyone to look at me. There are battles being waged that God is not assigning to us. Some of you here have become better political commentators than Jesus lovers. We are waging war on people who wear masks as though they don't have faith. And then, or, since when did faith get dwindled down to whether or not you wear a mask? I haven't read that in Hebrews yet. It doesn't say now faith is people who, wear, who don't wear a mask. Their political parties and political agendas are invading our family. That's not who we are. There is an element of Jesus, listen carefully, that is wanting to shine through us. Listen carefully to me. Jesus is wanting to shine through us. And, and let me just help you through the process. All of the news outlets you listen to have an agenda. All of them. All of them. The devil would love for you to be more into what's going on than you are into Jesus. And let me say this. You can say the right thing the wrong way and it be very wrong. That's not who we are. We are a people of honor here. We honor people when we disagree with them. We love them. The mission of the church is to be the house of God. It's this hero complex that's just trying to get on. I don't want to be a hero. I want to point people to him. This isn't a message on unity. This is a message on Jesus. But I wanted to remind you, listen carefully. Don't pick up a sword God is not putting in your hand. Don't do it because of the battle may last a lot longer than you signed up for. The devil is a mastermind. He's a mastermind at picking a fight, hoping you'll engage. We think the fight will only last a moment. And the next thing we know, we've eaten up six months in battle and in argument when we could have been adoring the Lord. Look to Jesus. Listen carefully. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. I don't care what's happening in the world. Look to Jesus. If the 
candidate you hate gets elected, look to Jesus. If the candidate you love gets elected, look to Jesus. Are, are you with me? I don't know what's gotten into some of us. I heard someone say, well, the only people who die from this thing are old people. That's loving. I think there is a curse in America called dishonor. Everyone who's not old here will be one day. And you're going to want to matter. I think America needs to begin honoring the elderly. Instead of just pretending they don't need oh, I mean, the only people, I mean, they're just 80. I'm sure Moses would have loved that. You're just 80. God called him at that age. Are you following me? You see how the devil comes in and just causes us to war and we have these thought, thought processes? No, friend. No, 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 no. We are Jesus people. And this is what the Bible says. Your king, listen carefully. Your king cometh unto you lowly and meek riding on a donkey. I want to encourage you to not only listen for truth, but to listen to the tone by which the truth comes. There is an abrasiveness that is not Jesus flowing from the pulpit. It's not the Lord. I'm not saying you don't confront and speak up, but wherever you find criticism, listen carefully, dishonor, ridicule, you will find pride as the origin of it. You also find judgment in the shadows. You know, when, the, when somebody messes up in life, Jesus tells us to be merciful. And the promise is, listen carefully, the promise is to the merciful that they will receive mercy. That means sowing and reaping applies to this area. If I want mercy on the day that I need it, and we all need it, I need to learn to sow it now. The closer you get to Jesus and the longer you walk with him, you do not become more convinced of your own strength. You become more convinced of his strength and more convinced of your own weakness. You also realize this. That could be me, except for the mercy of God. That could be me. Does anyone remember their life before they met the Lord Jesus? May the Lord fill us with tender meekness. Do you know what the meek inherit? The earth. That's not bad. <laughs> your will be done. Your kingdom come on. God has an agenda for the earth. And the meek are trusted with it. So you have two choices. One, win the argument. Or inherit the earth. I'm taking the earth. This is what the Jesus people are like. Yes, we raise our voice. Yes, we stand our ground. Yes, we declare the gospel. But we do it the way Jesus does. We point the world to him. Amen. Lift your hands to heaven. Come on. Can you pick that up? Just give me a pad that just fills the whole room. I want to pray something bold tonight. Father, let the signs and wonders of heaven invade this house and invade your people. I pray that you would, through your precious Holy Spirit, I pray that you would endorse what I preach tonight with signs and wonders. And I thank you for testimonies. Next Sunday night, 
that will testify to your word, that you have confirmed it. Make us a meek people, a holy people, a loving people, a gentle people, a godly people, a saintly people. I pray that you'd speak to the church in dreams and in visions. I pray that their nights would become alive, that you'd begin to speak to them. And I pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ would be declared through their lips with fire and passion and boldness and love. Let us love you and bless your people. Protect them. I declare Psalm 91 over you and your entire house right now. I say of the Lord over you, He is your refuge and your fortress, your God. In Him will you trust. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor His seed begging for bread, the Psalms say. Never seen it. In Jesus' name, I declare the blessing of the Lord over you, that the Lord's face would shine upon you, that His glory would be upon you, that His favor would be upon you, that your children would serve the Lord, that they'd receive it, that you would never know a day away from, the God, the, from Jesus, that your children would never know a day outside the fold, that they would walk with the Lord. And Father, I need you to agree, just one more thing. Father, let this be the beginning of a great outpouring of your Spirit here in this house. And we remember your prophetic destiny over this house that you would live among us and that the nations would come to be in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We love you. We love you. You can say I love you too. That would help. I'm suffering for re rejection there. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. Make me feel better. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you guys. We'll see you Sunday night. Oh, offering. Isn't that wonderful? Gosh. You can't call me a money preacher. I forgot the offering again. Come on, let's be faithful tonight. Guys, just so you know. Almost in half, I would say we're right around there. It's been thousands and thousands of dollars that, uh, that we have, you know, not received. So just follow the Lord. If, if Be faithful in your tithes and your offerings. Tomorrow we find out some incredible, hopefully, some incredible news regarding a plot of land. So be in prayer for that. We hear from the, we hear from the attorneys tomorrow. We've been working on this for a few months now. It's a beautiful piece of prop. It's like the final... We just need favor, so just pray. Will you do that tonight? Pray, and we're and we're gonna we're gonna be uh, believing the Lord to do a miracle. Amen. So um, let's just give by text. Give. How are we gonna do it? Buckets. Okay. So spread out the buckets, guys. We can uh, just come up if you'd like to give that way. If you'd like to give by text to give, uh, that's best. You can go ahead and text that number. Love you guys so much. Thank you. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday night. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, does the, do, do the students know? Do the students? All right, students, you guys hang back. Only students. So once you've given, if you could please um, just exit because we need to keep the students back to have a quick meeting. Love you guys so much.